How do we fix a case of the flailing floppy fingers on our pick hand? The answer's so simple, it might surprise you. Well, hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben, and one of the questions that I get the most from my lovely and loyal Patreon community over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars is how to solve the problem of picking hand fingers that don't know what to do. Some of us end up setting them on the body of the guitar, some of us end up fanning them out or just really tensing them up. And sometimes that's not exactly what you want to do. Lucky for you guys, I found a brilliant solution to this problem the other day while scrolling on the Instagram. I follow all kinds of guitar and bass pages on there, one of which is Massive Bass Nerd. That's Massive underscore Bass underscore Nerd. Be sure to give him a follow and tell him that Uncle Ben sent you. Anyway, he posted a video on his page the other day showing you how you can fix the problem of like flailing fingers when playing slap bass stuff. Because whenever you're playing like that slap and pop bass style, you don't want your other fingers fanning out or touching the body or anything like that. He put up this really short and simple video showing you how to fix that problem and it kind of blew my mind and it got me thinking about how we can use that exact same trick to solve a lot of our picking hand problems on the guitar. Check it out. Hey, here's a cool little slap bass trick. If you're ever having a hard time keeping your right hand in the proper position, try putting a pick on top of your ring finger and your pinky and holding it in your hand like that. And it really forces you to keep that position when you slap. How freaking smart is that? Because there's no way these fingers can be fanning out or holding onto the body of the guitar if they're assigned the task of holding onto a guitar pick like that right there. Such a smart and simple solution. I never thought about this in all my years of playing and teaching. Awesome stuff. This is why I love the internet, guys. People are smart. And there's dog and kitty videos. Really important stuff, too. So this got me thinking about how we could apply that to the little guitar right here to solve that ever familiar problem that a lot of us have, where we rest fingers on the body of the guitar, maybe we wrap a finger around a pickup, or just, you know, fan the fingers out like this. We'll address this a little bit more later on in the video because I don't really think that having a finger resting on the body or whatever is necessarily a bad thing all the time. But for some of us, it can get in the way, it can add tension, it can become a habit that limits our range of mobility. So if you're a player that finds yourself unsure about what to do with your other fingers, try this trick out and I guarantee it's gonna help a lot. Okay, so you hold your pick between your first finger and your thumb as always or your uh, first two fingers and thumb if you're more of that style of picker that's okay too but whatever fingers are giving you trouble just give them something to hold on to I'm just using a good old Dunlop T3 pick right here gripping that in between my last three fingers like you're seeing right here and now suddenly they're behaving. They can't fan out. They can't rest on the body of the guitar or whatever. Just give them something to do, right? Give them something to hang on to. Now, as you do this, you don't want to over squeeze, okay? Think of it like you're holding an egg in your hand. You don't want to over contract because then you're just inviting more attention in. Again, whenever we're doing this stuff, we're always trying to play the guitar with as little tension as possible. So hang on to the pick loosely. Go with that 38 special advice. Hold on loosely and don't let go because if you grip too tightly, you will lose control. They have it right. So just keep a loose grip on that pick here with your free fingers and try to practice some of your normal stuff, whether that be like some exercises, maybe some like funky strumming and stuff. And see if you can maintain that really light amount of tension that you have to use in order to hang on to a pick. And again, that's going to get your fingers away from the body. It's going to get your fingers away from fanning out or causing extra tension or whatever. Such a smart solution. And again, it solves the problem basically instantly. I have a feeling if you practice that way pretty regularly, I bet within a week's amount of time. That's gonna feel pretty normal for you to have those fingers curled into the palm as you play rather than resting on the body or whatever. Okay, let's talk about that though because this seems to be one of those issues that I see people get really self-conscious about. If they're the kind of player that plants a finger on the body of the guitar or maybe, you know, rest the, uh, the, the finger around the pickup ring or something like that. This seems to be something that a lot of people worry about because they're like, my favorite player is 
Francis Bubble Trousers and he holds his hand like this so therefore that's the right way and that's how I should do it. In reality the different ways that we can hold our picking hands free fingers are as numerous as grains of sand on the beach. I mean compare the way that Marty Friedman plays to the way that like John Petrucci plays, to the way that Michelangelo Badio plays. They're all working for those individual players, right? And they all seem to be very relaxed in doing so. That's what matters more than anything. Don't try to make your hands look like your favorite guitar player. Your anatomy, your physiology, everything is different. They have found what works for them and you need to find what works for you. However, if this has become one of those things that you think is detracting from your playing, then it's time to make a change and try to stop it by using this second pick technique that I learned from Massive Bass Nerd. For myself with my right hand, I've always kind of maintained that finger is kind of lightly curled into the palm, sort of picking position. That's just kind of what's always felt right for me. But you know, again, for a lot of players, like if you look at, let's say, Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen's always had that kind of fanned out finger thing. Of course, he holds his pick with his second finger like that and his thumb too. But whenever he does his tremolo picking stuff, I, I can't do it with that technique. <laughs> but he seems to make that work and he seems really, really relaxed. I have, however, seen some players where I can, you know, watch them playing the guitar and see that these fingers are out and they're stock straight and it's making them really tense. And it's just putting more wear and tear on everything that's not necessarily going to benefit you, especially in the long run. Some players like to rest a finger or two on the body of the guitar. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I found myself over the years, especially whenever I'm playing like a Les Paul type guitar with a pit guard that's kind of right there close to your hands. Um, if I'm playing on the high strings, a lot of times I'll notice the tops of my fingers kind of resting on the body or on the pit guard. Several of my guitars have like a big shiny spot right here where I've done just that for hours hours and hours and hours at a time. Again, it doesn't seem to slow me down. It definitely doesn't add tension to what I'm doing. So I'm not really too worried about, you know, fixing it. But where resting a finger or two on the body of the guitar can become a problem is especially if this becomes kind of your standard way of playing, right? With these fingers kind of anchored to the body. Okay. Essentially what this is doing is it's limiting our range of motion. It's making us use our wrist for our picking. This is how like Michelangelo Badio uses this kind of picking technique uh, to get absolutely ludicrous speeds. It limits your range of motion. I kind of liken it to resting your hand on the paper whenever you're writing. It keeps you from using your whole arm, right? That's why you rest the side of your hand on the paper. Limits the motion, you can be more precise. So this in itself is not a bad thing. But the problem is, is if this becomes the only way that you can play and it's time to do something funky and strummy, it really sucks. Like your strumming does not sound good, it does not feel good at all. And again, that's a lot of wear and tear on that wrist to be making those huge motions like this if you're glued to the body of the guitar. I've seen players wrestle with this before. This again is another time that you should use this double pick technique. Get that thing in your hand, get your uh, fingers away from the body of the guitar and loosen up that motion. It's definitely gonna help you a lot in the long run. And the truth of the matter is too, you know, a lot of these hand positions that we obsess over when we watch our favorite guitar players play, they come and go depending on the context. So like one that I see people point out a lot is the way that John Petrucci of Dream Theater kind of wraps his little finger around the base of the pickup. You'll notice a lot of times whenever he's like playing really shreddy solos and stuff, he's got that finger right there on the edge of the pickup. It's kind of an anchor for the picking hand. <laughs> you do that you can feel how it limits the range of motion and that's not necessarily a bad thing it kind of keeps you from making pick strokes that are too large but whenever you see him riffing and stuff or doing anything strummy like in those ballad -y type tunes that position is gone it's kind of like this is you know fifth gear mode but if he's not in that the hand is more kind of curled in like what we see out of a lot of players so keep in mind some of these little quirks that you see in your favorite players picking hands they're not always there. It kind of comes and goes. Even Marty Friedman, I've seen him break away from his, you know, kind of underhanded technique depending on what he's doing. So a lot of times these variations on what we do with our free fingers on our picking hand, they are serving some kind of purpose. I'm not saying that all of that stuff should be eliminated. Again, tons of players do this 
and it improves their playing. As long as it's not causing you tension, as long as it's not causing you pain or limiting your range of motion, just stick with it. But if you're the kind of player that feels like it is kind of holding you back, maybe limiting your strumming power or whatever, or maybe this is just a new habit that's kind of crept up in your technique. I've had that happen too, where you take a little break from playing and suddenly you come back and something different's going on. I've had that happen. If you feel like this is something that's holding you back, try this trick out, maybe for a week or so, and come back and let me know how it's treating you in the comments. Hopefully that gives you guys an easy fix for the, the finger flip outs. Again, credit goes to massive underscore base underscore nerd over on Instagram. Be sure to go give him a follow and tell him Uncle Ben said hey, and thanks for the cool trick. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing to the channel. Be sure to like this video and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. If you enjoyed this video and want to get even more bonus content like downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus videos, vlogs, as well as access to a community of cool people like yourself, be sure to sign up for that Patreon page over patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but now it's time to go play some guitar. Maybe with two picks this time. Let's click it. More picking.